Ladies and gentlemen, internet, my name is Perdium, and let's talk about the three pillars of strategy in Survivor and Big Brother. For a long time now, I've observed an endless debate in the discourse of the Survivor and Big Brother communities about how to best measure a contestant's ability to play the game, as well as how to best judge an overall game itself. We try to be objective with what information we have, and so we break down all of the facets that compose a player's game, and then rank them against each other, trying to figure out who's the best or the worst, and what even makes any individual game of a higher quality. I've observed three categories, or labels, or pillars as I like to say, for how we often measure the games of Survivor and Big Brother. You have the physical game, the strategic game, and the social game. With this video, let's break down each of these pillars and deduce what they mean or could mean and why. Amazingly, you use Jonathan in voting Jonathan out as a way to potentially help you win this game. You said to Yule that if you get rid of Jonathan before me or Parvati, that I'll give you my votes exactly. in the end. Exactly. And if not, I would have voted for Ozzy. So. And did you keep your word? Yep. And another credit to you, Yule, for doing something that I don't think people realized you were doing, which was playing everybody so in such subtle ways. It's a tiny little maneuver, but it seemed to pay off. Because there is a lot of ambiguity about them. And even now, as of this video, I will tell you I don't have a concrete answer for defining every part of them. So feel free to give your input into better understanding these three major aspects of the game and what they mean to you. First up, let's talk about the easiest to understand, that being the physical game. Both in Survivor and Big Brother, the physical game is usually based on challenges and competitions. Reward challenge, immunity challenge, HOH competition, veto competition, what have you. How good a player is at winning these events means they have a stronger physical game. In the case of Survivor, I would also say there are elements of survival in the wilderness that come into play, though that's a little less concrete. Being able to build shelter or produce a fire, catch fish, gather resources for the tribe or for themselves, all of these play into the physical aspect. Because I don't necessarily think most of these physical elements at a base level are inherently strategic or social, though they definitely can be utilized in social and strategic ways. But at their core, those tasks to me represent a physical component. Mind you, physically strong players on either of these shows can still throw challenges and competitions and have a strong physical game. Throwing a competition is a strategic move, and to me it doesn't bear much meaning toward how strong their physical game is. If anything, it's more of an indication of how good they may be with the strategic pillar. Or bad, in that case, <laughs> if it ends up costing them the game. I threw the challenge today because we need to go to Tribal and get some of the snakes that are on our team off. If I don't want to win, we're not going to win. And that's what makes me the kingpin of my tribe. If I had the opportunity to throw this game, I would. And uh, I did. Basically, I'm a badass and a manipulator of this game. <laughs> True. Tribe spoken. Okay, so being good at challenges and at camp dictates the physical game. So let's talk about the next pillar. Let's talk about the social game. Oh boy. All right. Here we go. This term, the social game, gets thrown around a lot. I even spoofed it in one of my older Big Brother videos because of how often I saw it being used and I couldn't tell if the players who were saying it knew what they were saying. It kind of felt like a buzzword. So in hopes of not buzzing about aimlessly, let's actually talk about it. From my observations, I've seen many people over the years define the social game in numerous ways. Some say it's about having a lot of connections, a lot of friends, or at least allies, people who you surround yourself with that will look out for you. Some say it's about utilizing these relationships to your advantage, leveraging them to position yourself better at each point in either game. If a player wins a reward challenge in Survivor and gets to take someone with them, how often do you think any given person might choose you? Because that might help determine how many friends you have, for better or worse. If a player is just naturally likable, people would love to see them win, just not at their own expense, does that mean they have a good social game? If a player isn't very likable, but is able to connect with many players and convince them to steer in their direction for a vote or even several votes, does that mean they have a good social game? Do you have to be a butterfly? Do you have to be extroverted? Do you have to be maneuvering a lot 
to be considered good or can you just sort of sting like a bee when it matters most for you even if it may sour the relationship of the person you stung. I'm throwing a lot of questions, but I'm curious to know the answers to these questions because I think they help define what we're talking about. Just how much agency or control of one's abilities to produce a desired effect is required to have a social game. Because to me, and brace yourselves by the way for this, I would argue none. I would argue that you don't need agency to have a good social game. It can help being deliberate with how you interact with others, but I would argue being able to relate to others, to connect with others, being viewed positively by others, even if you don't intend it, is enough. Although if we're being honest, I think most people, even you listening to this right now, intend to be liked to some degree, but I am setting a bar for where this starts. The way I define the social game doesn't involve any strategic play. And I'll explain why in a second when I talk about the strategic game. You hear a lot about how the social game is the most important part to winning Survivor or Big Brother, and I have agreed with that sentiment for a long time. And that's because a jury will always vote for who they like the most first, and then if they don't care for any of the finalists, they'll vote for who they dislike the least, which is almost one and the same. Being inherently likable, being able to jive with the people you're playing with, is the best thing you can have going for you when you reach the end of the game. It's like a stock value that'll consistently grow over the course of the season and then pay off big time at the end. All that goodwill you've garnered will turn into sweet, sweet cash. That's the win condition to win Survivor and Big Brother. Get the most jury votes. And if you don't connect with that specific jury with that group of people, or at least a majority of them, you won't win on almost any season. I'm only me. I'm Gina Marie, and if there's any way I defended anyone, I'm sorry. I just wish you all the best of luck and with your families, with any careers and any jobs and all your families, and I thank you for sharing your life. Okay. A strong social game is when a player can make good relations with almost anyone in their cast at almost any point. It's definitely an aspect that can be worked and improved upon before you go into a season, like right now, like right this very second. If you're watching this in the off season and you want to play in a future season, there are many things you can do to put yourself out there and learn how to better integrate socially, become more well-adjusted in almost any situation. Learning how to form strong bonds, be social, let it become a skill that just feels and comes naturally to you so that it will feel natural to both you and the people you meet when you do eventually get to play. Kind of like working out at a gym or even in just your own personal life to boost your physical game or learning puzzles. Also, technically physical, Survivor loves puzzles. These two components, the physical and the social, are invaluable. They are so, so critical to playing Survivor and Big Brother well, and they're the two things I would personally strive to improve as much as I can before I ever played. Which leads me to the last pillar the strategic game. If on one hand you have the physical game, and on the other hand you have the social game, let me ask you, which hand holds the strategic game? Because unless you have three hands, which I don't, I think we're in a quandary. I'm thinking they're gonna vote for me because they want me gone. Like, do these people think I'm stupid? Yeah. Do they think I'm stupid? Like, Amanda's played with me before. I knew that Amanda was lying to me when she told me that they were voting for me. Like, I know you're trying to get rid of me, but I'll just play along with you right now. It's like, thanks for looking out for me, buddy. Here's the deal. I think the strategic game goes in both hands. So much so that I don't even consider the strategic game a third pillar. Earlier I said you don't need agency to be strong socially. I don't think you need agency to be strong physically either. You can just be good at those to varying degrees, whether you want to be or not. But to be competent strategically, to be good strategically, you need agency. You need to be deliberate. I believe the strategic game is an umbrella that encompasses both the physical and the social and overlaps with them like a Venn diagram. Because strategy is having a long-term plan. You're working towards a goal, be it to get someone voted out, to reach the jury phase, to reach the final two, or to probably win the game. Or even as simply as getting through the week. What's your strategy? Most players have something in mind, which leads me to grade them based on how good they are tactically to achieve their goal. Having strong tactics to achieve your strategy is of utmost importance. Tactics are the moves you make to come out successful in your overall strategy. Throwing an ally under the bus, picking a person to bond with for the week, knowing they may become a key player in future events, 
throwing a challenge and the degree to which you throw it. The words you choose to say to anyone at any time, even the words that I am choosing to say right now, are tactical. My overall goal with this video is to better explain these terms to you from my perspective and my strategy is to outline the definitions of the pillars and my tactics are what I say and when I say them and how I say them. And also the clips I like to throw in to back up my words. Like that Drew Christie clip I used earlier when I talked about how throwing challenges can backfire. Basically, I'm a badass and a manipulator of this game. These are tactics that good players employ on a regular basis. Not saying I'm good, mind you, I've never played, but I've watched a lot of players make good and bad tactical decisions, particularly on the Big Brother live feeds, and that usually separates the wheat from the chaff. You kind of scared me in the game because I didn't know what, what I might be looking at. So as, as, as harsh and as terrible as it is, you should have used the veto. I'm sorry, but I vote to evict you, Marcellus. There is a definite overlap with tactical moves in the physical game, just as there is with the social game. I think leveraging your relationships to get ahead can be a strong tactical social idea. But then I ask you, does that make the move a social one or a strategic one? Do you see why it can get confusing? Which is why I say there is no third strategic pillar. There's too much overlap, too much strategies involved on a day-to-day, -day, minute minute-to-minute basis through both of these games for there to be a third pillar. There's too much overlap and that causes endless confusion on the definition. So to better define these terms, I knock down that third pillar and instead incorporate it into degrees of both the physical and the social. And okay, if you want to force a label out of me, if you just need something more to hang your hat on when it comes to making moves, what would you call that peridium? I would probably accept like tactical game, but even then I still think there is too much overlap to make it entirely separate. Because Survivor and Big Brother are inherently social games with lots of physical components too. They're built to be this way, unlike say chess or checkers. And to me, that's what makes the most sense when it comes to better understanding the social, the physical, and the overall strategic games they demand. I'll definitely talk about this more down the road, but that is my fundamental explanation for how the players can be judged on a scale and ranked in a tier list. Nonetheless, I already know not everyone's going to be agreeing with me here, and that's fine. Let me know how you might view these aspects of the show, because my beliefs did not come from scratch, so I'm curious to know what you think, and if I could be swayed to your side. Ultimately, my name is still pretty. I'm saying thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to choose your words carefully as you get to step in and I will see you in the next one once I begin to settle in for the summer because I have a funny feeling we're in for a treat. I just have to continue to cater to my specific skill set which is my social game and my social game is everything. It is built upon making people laugh. I'm a coconut opener watcher and if I could help people get through the day and laugh then it's easier for them to crack open that coconut for me. Ooh, that looks good. And pick me up after I lose a challenge. Everybody has failure in the game. Everybody. You just don't want that failure to be getting voted out. Three votes, Ben. Two votes, Chrissy. One vote, Ryan. One vote left. Oh.